Hey there, it's me again, Larry Hill, Uncle Pleasant. Hey, I'm uh, in the middle of editing that video for the, the hydrometer. So while I'm doing that, I figured I would uh, go through some of my questions that I did screenshots of and saved and answer those real quick. The hydrometer video is gonna be a little bit crippled because I didn't know this, I learned this but I didn't know it in advance, so I wasted money. Um, see that? That's my parrot cup for the, the hydrometer. See all the cracks in it? I did not know this. You can't put ethanol in uh, acrylic, which would probably tell me that uh, Jason or John Bonham probably ruined quite a few drum sets with his... Uh, drinking on stage back in the Led Zeppelin days because he played those uh, acrylic Ludwig drums. So yeah, uh, this one lasted, this was my first one. It lasted, I don't know how many runs. And then one day I noticed that there were cracks and uh, <laughs> my hydrometer was leaking all over the place. So I ordered another one and it didn't last, but maybe, I don't know, 10 seconds after the the ethanol hit it. it, it literally shattered it. So I got to figure out what to do about a parrot cup. I'm thinking maybe I might have to use a copper pipe cap, a two inch cap, and maybe a slight bit of an extension in there to get it up high enough so that it will hold the same volume, you know, the four ounces. But I'm not experienced in that and Another thing that might come in handy if I do go that route is that I could put, you know, aside from the overflow portion that's on this, I can put a drain plug or a drain valve down here near the bottom. So if a person wants to drain off four shots without having to actually pull, you know, pause the still controller, pull the cup out, dump it, put it back in, you know, that's an idea. But first I got to get a two inch cap and a small section of two inch pipe. But beyond that, let's get on to the questions. Here's number one. I see some people talking about a Genio doing automated cuts, but when I look up information on it, their method doesn't seem to be anything based on flavor compound detection. Are they just doing things based on volume measurements? Yes, that is precisely all they are doing. Uh, you have to keep in mind that Genio built the entire still. They know exactly how much volume is in the boiler. And the last time I watched a video on it, you had to tell the little controller what the ABV was, you know, of what you put in there. So as the thing's running, it stops and says, hey, here's your heads or four shots, dump this. Now we're gonna start collecting hearts. And it runs and then it stops again and says, hey, we're into tails, we're done. So, you know, you have to just accept the fact that Automated cuts are not a thing. Um, you can't just stick a sensor on a computer, put it in your distillate, and know what flavor compounds are in there that you like. Uh, flavor compounds are in the form of a gas or an oil. And when I say an oil, I'm talking about uh, botanicals, if you're making a gin. Uh, the only other way you're gonna pull this off is if you get a gas chromatograph mass spectrometer, put a sample in there, and then you have to know exactly what elements you're looking for, you know, that constitute your flavor. And then by the time you get your results back from that device, you're still doing something completely different. So it's a big waste of time. Uh, just accept the fact that automated cuts are not a thing. Sorry. Next question. I have to say that this is probably the most incredible still accessory to come along in who knows how many years. Do you plan to set up some kind of support channel for it, since MeWe isn't exactly mainstream? I certainly won't be, but if somebody else wants to do it, be my guest. Um, I don't use Facebook, TikTok, or any other mainstream things like that just because I don't like tracking cookies following me all over the internet so people know where I've been, what I'm shopping for, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, I know there's a chasing the craft group on Facebook 
and they use Jesse Wilson's logo or his images like in the header and links to his videos and stuff like that but he actually has nothing to do with it so if somebody else wants to do the same thing by all means be my guest I'm kind of one of those people that uh, well at one time way back when Groucho Marx said that he wouldn't belong to any club that would have him as a member. I'm kind of the same way. I'm in a few programming groups on MeWe and a couple uh, distilling groups, but I don't like things that have a whole lot of traffic where I'm getting notifications all day long. It's just not my bag. Um, I do paid support for certain things that I've done through my own uh, Nextcloud server because it has its own chat and video conferencing function built into it. But other than that, nope, I won't be doing anything on Facebook or any other sites like that. But if you want to, go right ahead. Be my guest. Next question. Does a person have to change their T500 cooling water flow, like you did? Why can't they use it the way that it was originally designed for? Well, I guess you could, but I don't understand why you'd want to do that. I don't understand why you would put so much effort into building this controller to make your still more efficient, but then continue to run your cooling water the most inefficient way possible. Uh, there isn't another still out there where they do this, where they run your cooling water out of your um, condenser over to the input of your deflag. Nobody does that. Uh, you have to keep in mind the T500 stock out of the box with their configuration using that little tube at the top. Uh, when you slow your water flow down to the point that you're getting between 55 and 60 C on your discharge water from your deflag, your water is moving so slowly through your condenser that it's not converting all of your ethanol vapor back to a liquid because you can actually smell it. it floats around coming out of there as a gas and God, do you want your house to go boom? I don't. Um, there's also the fact that this controller has two valves, you know, one for the deflag, one for the condenser. The one for the condenser is actually, aside from you setting up a program to say, I want it to run at this rate, the temp there's a temperature sensor on the digital hydrometer that reads the temperature of your distillate. If it's too warm, it bumps up the water flow on your condenser so you don't have a fire hazard, you know, because ethanol vapors do go boom. So I guess, you know, it, if you want to, but it makes no sense to me why you'd want to or why you would put all that effort into building this if you're gonna continue to do things the wrong way. Next question. Is there any way to change the voice that the system speaks in? In that one video you said, Thank you Stephen Hawking, and I realize that is the exact same voice that his computer spoke with. <laughs> yeah, that's not the first time I've heard that. Um, I guess it goes to show one thing, uh, Stephen Hawking was a Linux user. How do you like those apples? But yeah, you can change the language. If you look at the code to this, the, the code is in two sections. There is a, an undercarriage section, and then there is a user interface section. The undercarriage section has this file in there called voiceprompts.php, and the one command in there that actually executes, that produces the text-to-speech, you can change the voice on there. But in all honesty, um, they, they all sound robotic. It's just a, the eSpeak program for Linux is not the most oh, glorious sounding thing there is. If there's another one, I, I'd try it. I have tried other ones, but they all suck. <laughs> Honestly, even eSpeak, it sucks, but it works. But yeah, if you want to change the language, you can just edit the one part of the command in that file that uh, produces it. So that's it. Next question. What exactly do you do for a living? I wouldn't think that there are any software companies in Nebraska. Actually, there are a couple software companies in Nebraska, uh, two that I know of in Omaha, and uh, I guess there's a gaming software company in Beatrice, but there's nothing local to me. What I do is I work part-time for a 
small time IT joint, which is not local to me. Um, I worked for him full time up until May 16th of last year where I voluntarily went part time uh, because, well, in May 2018, I lost the vision in this eye. You know, so that's why I don't look at the camera very much. I'm blind over here and this eye does stupid shit all the time and wanders. So that's why I don't look at the camera directly very much. Um, so ever since then, I became strangely sensitive to glare and all of the software that they use uh, has a white background. So it's like staring into a light bulb all the time. And I just can't do that anymore. So now I work 8 a.m. to noon and then I screw off or do my other stuff the rest of the day and do some um, stuff on Fiverr.com. I won't get into that very deep. But uh, yeah, prior to that, I was full time and I had this goofy job title in my email signature that said Director of Remote Support. And I don't know why I hated it from day one. I think the only reason I had it is because it benefited them in conversations where they could say, well, our director of remote support, I didn't direct a goddamn thing, not anything. Uh, and one time, I don't know if you ever saw the documentary series from Leah Remini called um, Scientology in the Aftermath. One of the people that's mentioned in that thing frequently is uh, one of the clients and he asked me one time what I direct because at that time it was just me my boss and his wife I'm going you know not a goddamn thing nothing I don't direct anything and it was embarrassing as hell so uh, one day I saw my name referred to in another document as a senior consultant and I asked my boss if I could just change my email signature to say that because clearly I don't direct anything so why call me a director so here I am now, part-time doing that and uh, don't have any problems with it. Um, they didn't offer insurance, so I was paying all my insurance out of my own pocket. They kept giving me raises, which disqualified me for the assistance from healthcare.gov. So by the time I paid for all of my insurance, I was only netting about $6,000 a year more than I would be making part-time. So why continue working full-time when I can just get insurance for free because I qualify for it. Hmm. Being debt free is kind of nice. Not having to work full time. I call it semi retired. Next question. You know, I often saw people in the past say that they were going to do this using an Arduino. You're actually the first person to pull it off, but you're using a different computer to do it. What was the reason for the Raspberry Pi? Well, the reason that you never saw any of those uh, come to light is because an Arduino just is not powerful enough to do it. And even if you were to use the you know next step up like a, an ESP32, you couldn't do it with just one of those either. Uh, there's no database for any of those things. And the way this is built, you would have to have at least three of them because of the, the way the code is. Uh, there's one background process that reads the inputs, another one that writes to the outputs, and another one that does the, the logic. So you would have to have three ESP32s doing that, and then I don't know how you would do the data communication between all three of them. I, I guess you could, but uh, you'd have a rat maze. So that's why I went with uh, the Raspberry Pi is because it runs Linux, which is a multitasking operating system. So I can have all of those processes running in the background separately. And there's also the fact that even though there is a web server library for an ESP32, it's uh, very basic. Uh, it doesn't allow you to do anything that you can do with a web server on a Linux device using PHP. So that's why you never saw any of those things come to light. It's just not possible to pull it off with them. They don't have the power. Next question. I just found the GitHub page for this. In the home document you mentioned that you're not a pseudo master distiller or internet celebrity wannabe, like those two charlatans from the Still in the Clear channel. I know who you're referring to. What's the beef with those two clowns? Well, congratulations, you found the GitHub page, you win. 
Um, as for that story about those two, uh, it's kind of a long one, but I can probably put it into a Reader's Digest condensed version. Let's just say that there are some people in this world who are so sensitive regarding their egos that they lose their shit anytime somebody comes along that just might know something that they don't know. Um, and that guy's wife, I swear she keeps his balls in her purse. Uh, he, God, what a dominating bitch. But there was an incident. He has this group on MeWe, which I guess he has this one by the same name on Facebook. He calls it uh, Moonshine for Beginners. I call it Moonshine for Infants because of the way all of his little cronies behave in there. Uh, there was a user in that group that asked uh, why people um, re-distill things, why, why they do a stripping run and then distill it again after that. And uh, one of his questions was, well, what happens if I just put 80 proof or whatever in the still? And I said, well, it goes boom. And I explained that, that the fumes or the, you know, the vapors from ethanol are so volatile that they don't even have to be very warm and they'll go boom. And I said, for example, um, and people do this with hot toddies all the time, you know, they'll put whiskey in a cup of coffee. If it's not quite warm enough, they'll put it in a microwave to warm it up a little bit. And I said, all you got to do is take a lighter and hold it over that and it'll actually flare up, even though it's not very high proof and uh, the vapors just have to be a little bit warm well the next thing you know old cyrus is telling people that i'm encouraging others to put alcohol in a microwave no i didn't and then his retarded wife jumps on the bandwagon and starts in with her verbal masturbation as well and it finally got to the point where cyrus said that Redistillation is not an allowed topic in his group. So people aren't allowed to do stripping runs or make vodka or make gin because after all that's redistillation and he very loudly said no. So that's the problem with them. And then there's also the fact that he runs a merch shop and he uses a fake return address on the packages that he sends out. And I got the address from one of the packages, or at least a letter that he sent to somebody with something in it. And I looked up the address. No, he doesn't own that place. He says that he does this off-grid living thing and lives in a cabin. And I looked it up. Uh, Crawford County Assessor in Arkansas is the website that I went to. Nope, it's not a cabin. And nope, uh, he doesn't own it. And I set up a bogus account on Facebook to try to contact that guy. And I did. And he said he had never heard of Cyrus. So that's why I say he's a charlatan. He's a scammer. Um, he's a very delicate little snowflake. Can't handle it when somebody knows something that he doesn't. I'm serious. Avoid that, that idiot like the plague. Avoid his groups and avoid his channel. Because all he teaches people is how to make corn flavored sugar washes. He actually has a video on his YouTube channel saying how to make bourbon. And uh, if you look up the laws in Kentucky regarding what goes into bourbon, not once do they mention putting sugar in it, but he does and he calls it bourbon. The guy's an amateur and he's a charlatan. He's a fake. He's a fraud. That's the problem with him. I don't like frauds and that guy has gone above and beyond to prove that's exactly what he is. So there's that story. Hope it didn't stretch out too long. Four and a half minutes, eh, whatever. Next question. Thanks for doing the video on the user interface. It certainly looks easy for anybody to use. Those people who seem to think that a Nebraska programmer don't know what they're doing are clearly the actual idiots. Thanks a lot. Uh, User interfaces really are not my thing. I just figured out how to make uh, WordPress plugins probably three years ago, something like that. Uh, so my user interface is still kind of pale by comparison to what most people are used to seeing. Um, 
I just learned not long ago how to use Twitter's or X's uh, bootstrap uh, user interface, CSS, JavaScript, HTML kit. So that's what I'm using there. As far as these people that uh, try to say that a Nebraska programmer doesn't know what they're doing, all I can say is that uh, the people who try to feed me that kind of bullshit, um, they couldn't make something half as good on their best day. And the people that I'm often told have software development experience, uh, merely have experience working with somebody else who did and can't answer my test questions correctly to save their ass. And believe me, uh, I do that a lot. Every time someone tries to tell me that they've done this or that regarding programming, I'll bounce test questions off of them. And thus far, um, I'm hitting about uh, maybe a 10% rate where people answer the questions correctly. So yeah, don't try to tell me that a Nebraska programmer doesn't know what he's doing when uh, you can't even answer his test questions correctly. <laughs> Next question. What are the chances that the Genio or I still company could shut down this project? Do they have any patents that they could claim that you're infringing upon? Actually, not a snowball's chance in hell. Uh, I'm not actually selling a complete still. And even if they did have patents on any of that stuff, um, you got to be able to litigate your patent and enforce it. So a lot of stuff that I see where people say that they have patents on things, it's merely a method patent. It's not an actual patent on the device itself. So you got to you got to know how patents work, but either way, I'm not selling a completed still. I at best, the only thing that I'm going to be selling are boards, you know, the modules for people who aren't up to doing their own soldering and the 3D printed parts. But beyond that, nope, not a chance in hell that they could ever shut this down. It's open source. I'm not taking money from them. Next question. Your stories of your journeys through the computer world crack me up. I'd love to hear the most preposterous line of crap one of these expert amateurs have tried feeding you. Okay, we're saving the best one for last. Maybe not. Uh, this one isn't exactly related to the smart still controller. Um, this question also popped up recently from my friend who posts things on other social media sites for me. Uh, I don't know if it was the last video, it might have been the one before that. But uh, it kind of goes back to the Cyrus situation that I just discussed, where there are some people in this world where they're their ego is so delicate that they can't handle the fact that somebody else might know something that they don't because they see themselves as such an expert. And it bothers them even more when it's a guy from Nebraska who knows something they don't, um, whether it's about health distilling or programming or computers in general. But this goes back to the Mac OS Mojave days um, a person told me that they were tired of hearing me talk about this secure token because it was complete bullshit. Even though uh, Apple has had that thing implemented into Mac OS since I believe Sierra, they just started seriously enforcing it in Mojave where you couldn't just go delete a user's account because you wanted to. If they had the secure token, you had to know their password in order to do it or you had to boot up the computer in recovery mode and do it that way. Um, and then I was also told that, uh, oh, he was tired of hearing me refer to Mac OS as Unix when that's precisely what it is. It's free BSD Unix. Um, the Mac OS portion is strictly the user interface, you know, the GUI, the part you drive with your mouse. That's what Mac OS is. The undercarriage, the bottom end of Mac OS is free BSD Unix. And to top it off, uh, Catalina was coming out next, and he said that in Catalina, Apple was doing away with all scripting capabilities, which would render my remote management system inoperable. And that is absolute bullshit, because anybody who knows Unix or Linux knows that 
you can't possibly have either of those without a command shell. And a script is nothing more than a text file with your command line commands in a text file. They just provide you the option to do logic within there. Um, so yeah, talk about the most preposterous bunch of bullshit I've ever heard. If Apple were to do that, they would uh, render all software development you know, history, because what is a C++ uh, source code file? It's, it's a script that talks to a, a compiler. And in order to actually fully prevent that, they would also have to do away with the terminal and uh, the ability to download anything with any web browser, because what would stop you from just uh, downloading a compiled script interpreter command shell and leaving that in your downloads directory to do whatever you want with. So yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. The things that I've heard along the way, uh, and it always comes down to people thinking that I honestly don't have any clue what I'm doing because I don't have a bunch of uh, certifications or diplomas, whatever, in eight by 10 frames on my, on my wall. And clearly their, you know, their certifications aren't doing them any good either because if if it wasn't a gaslighting attempt, um, something leads me to believe that they actually think what they're saying is possible, really possible, which tells me that you don't know anywhere near what you think you know. So that's it. That's the most preposterous thing I've ever heard. And that happened not long ago. So that wraps up this video. I'm going to finish up the editing on the the hydrometer video and get that uploaded too. Um, like I said at the beginning of this, I don't have a parrot cup. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do, but at least we'll we'll do a video that has a basic overview of how the hydrometer works, how to make one, and maybe I'll figure out what to do about a parrot cup. I'm not, I don't know how to work with copper pipe, so we'll see how that works out. Anywho, thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you around next time. Bye.